Usage of the Force in Star Wars has allowed beings connected to the mystical element to possess supernatural abilities that allowed them to do things that would otherwise be considered impossible. Using the Force to heighten one's senses, drastically increase physical strength, and move objects with the mind were among the most commonly used types of abilities by both the Jedi and Sith Orders. But these powers only scratched the surface of what was truly possible through the Force, as many users went out of their way to experiment and discover some of the most unique applications of the Force that was ever seen. Perhaps one of the most commonly asked questions of what could be done with the Force is the idea of whether it was possible to create and manipulate fire in a similar manner as Force Lightning. The answer is yes, it was very possible and was actually used quite a few times, though usually not in a direct combative application. The generation and manipulation of fire through the Force was known as pyrokinesis and was learned by a small handful of Jedi and many Sith, including Darth Sidious. Most of the time, however, its usage was more for defensive and supportive purposes rather than combative. For example, using it to light candles in a cave or controlling the flames of an explosion to minimize the damage output were some common uses. There was also once a witch on Endor that used pyrokinesis to create fireballs that she later used to harass nearby Ewok settlements, though it didn't appear to be that powerful. And while many Sith knew how to use pyrokinesis, it seems most favored other abilities for combative purposes like force lightning, which was likely not only far more destructive, but far easier to control and direct at enemies. Speaking of using the Force to essentially firebend, there was an isolated dark side clan on the planet Krovar that was known to use the Force to manipulate all natural elements, including water, rock, and air. They were basically elemental benders, and they held a unique disdain toward those who used invisible manifestations of the Force, like telekinesis and mind tricks. The planet they were isolated on was eventually discovered by the time of the Clone Wars, when it was attacked by Separatist forces. Once the Jedi became aware of them, the Dark Side group was referred to as Shapers due to their unique usage of the Force. Although they were Darksiders, the Shapers were largely left alone by the Jedi, who didn't particularly consider them that big of a threat, placing them in the same bucket as the Night Sisters, a group to keep an eye on, but not actively seek to destroy. The next unique and unorthodox force ability was known as Phase. As the name sort of suggests, it allowed users to completely pass through matter like solid walls and doors. The Jedi Master known as the Dark Woman was among the very few who had ever learned and mastered this ability. She used it frequently whenever attending the Jedi Temple, with at times scaring a few of the other masters who were not expecting her as she appeared right before them out of nowhere. Next is the Wall of Light ability. It was regarded as one of the most powerful light side force abilities among members of the ancient Jedi Order. Requiring the use of a couple Jedi at a time, the Wall of Light was a manifestation of great light side energies that were able to purify and exterminate dark side energies from within an area. It also had the potential of trapping and severing the connection of the force from dark side users, eliminating their ability of tapping into the force completely. We then have the rare ability known simply as Teleport. Those who mastered it were able to move themselves instantly to specific locations, usually to places that were within their field of vision. Night Sisters and Sith were among the most common practitioners of this ability, with the former usually leaving behind a green mist whenever they teleported. Another ability that was within the similar realm as Teleport was Force Travel. Force Travel was an extremely dangerous and risky force power that allowed the user to essentially teleport anywhere in the galaxy by creating a rift and traveling through it. Although those who used this ability could instantly teleport anywhere in the galaxy they had placed a rift in, they were far more likely to get killed in the process, as the amount of energy required put a tremendous amount of strain on the user's body. On top of that, a single small mistake during the process could leave them in the middle of endless space rather than their desired destination. Flow walking was another very unique ability that was learned by the secretive alien monks known as the ang Ti. It allowed them to place themselves into past and future events, seeing exactly what happened in events that were not properly recorded, but they were only able to act as observers and were unable to alter anything. Flow walking was later taught to a few members of Luke's New Jedi Order. Perhaps one of the most radical and rare force abilities was known as the Art of the Small. Created by the former Jedi Verger, Art of the Small was the process of shrinking the presence of the force to a microscopic size and then altering it so that when it returned back to its normal state, the properties of the molecules would be different. For example, 
Verger used this ability to alter the water molecules within herself to have healing properties in them, so that whenever she cried, her tears could be used to heal superficial wounds. It could also be used to merge foreign molecules to oneself to inherit their natural attributes, like a few users of this ability did with the properties of the Vong's unique force-resistant bodies. Deadly Sight was another ability that was known to have only been used by a very select few. Through the raw energies of the dark side, the user of Deadly Sight could damage enemies by simply looking at them. Those extremely powerful, and had mastered the ability greatly, were able to even disintegrate large groups of enemies at a time by just looking at them alone. However, this was one of the most taxing abilities on a force user based on its output, as using Deadly Sight to kill a few beings can leave a user as drained as had they killed an entire army using something like Force Lightning, which was far less taxing based on its destructive output. Another ability that was in the same category as Deadly Sight was Force Destruction. Force Destruction allowed the user to create a powerful energy field and then unleash it to vaporize everything it came into contact with. Some extremely powerful practitioners were able to create large balls of death that they could then shoot at their targets. Though just like with Deadly Sight, this ability was very taxing on the user's body, with it being very difficult to use this ability for more than a few times before requiring heavy rest. Force Weapon was another quite rare ability which allowed the practitioner to use the energies of the Force to embed into any weapon, making that weapon far more powerful than it originally was for a short period. For example, one Jedi Master used this ability to enhance his walking stick so that it'd be able to withstand a direct hit from a lightsaber blade. The Force ability known as Doppelganger was among the hardest to learn and master, and as such saw rare use in Star Wars. This ability allowed the user to create perfect illusions of either themselves or nearby objects, as a means to either confuse an enemy or scare them into submission. One cool way this ability was used was when a Jedi used it on allied starfighters to increase their numbers tenfold, as a means to intimidate the enemy they were advancing towards, and increase the chances of their enemy of either surrendering or retreating at the sight of the overwhelming ships alone. Next is Force Blinding. This unique power allowed its user to create an extraordinarily bright beam of light from their hand in order to blind their enemies for a short period. In some cases, it could even permanently blind those affected by it, making it quite dangerous when used at its fullest extent. Another rare and unorthodox force ability is Plant Surge. This ability allowed its practitioner to transfer a portion of their force energies into nearby plant life and become a part of its living system, allowing for them to control the vegetation as an extension of themselves. This was most useful when used on plants that had sharp tentacles or other natural attributes that would be effective for combat. We then have Shatterpoint, which is quite uncommon, but among the most powerful force abilities when used at its highest effectiveness. Shatterpoint allowed its users to use the force to see the weak points of both objects and living beings. When it came to physical objects, using Shatterpoint could allow the practitioner to completely destroy a reinforced wall or door by locating a weak point within its structure and then applying just enough pressure to cause it all to crumble. Its greatest effectiveness was when it came to using Shatterpoint against living beings, especially during duels. Just like it did with physical objects, Shatterpoint gave the user the ability to see faint weaknesses in their opponents that could give them a huge edge over them while in combat. These faint weaknesses that reveal themselves could range from showing the practitioner that their opponent's left arm was internally injured, to even revealing to them the best attack patterns to use against their enemy. We then have extremely powerful abilities that were only used by the most mighty force users in history. One of these abilities was Force Storm which could range from creating a small destructive city-wide lightning storm to one that was capable of swallowing entire fleets and ripping them apart. Those who mastered it completely were even able to use its wormhole effects to harmlessly teleport beings across the galaxy at will. Force Drain was another powerful and uncommon ability, which was used by a handful of individuals that were able to drain the life force from their victims to either empower themselves or increase their own lifespans. When taken to the extreme, some were able to drain entire planets of their life energies. However, a drawback to this power was that when used too much, it could deteriorate the physical body of the user and leave them as a mere husk of energy that was dependent on draining life for the remainder of their existence. Finally, we have sorcery-related abilities that use the Force. This ranged from Night Sister magic to Sith sorcery, which usually required physical items rituals, or living sacrifices in order to effectively create the desired spell or ability. Under this unique category, reanimation of the dead was possible, 
as seen with Ventress when she brought back a massacred Gungan colony back to life and had them mindlessly attack her enemies. Placing oneself into the mind of another, whether through a nightmare or forcibly entering their consciousness, was also another unorthodox ability that was used by Darth Sidious on Yoda light years away following a Sith ritual. Some rituals also resulted in the ability to manipulate and even move the inner cores of stars. This was known as Supernova, and it allowed some users to throw entire star cores at specific targets in the galaxy, resulting in the destruction of whole planets or fleets that were hit. Though such immensely powerful feats were only possible through rituals that were powered by multiple force users or extremely powerful force embedded crystals that empowered the force user tenfold and allowed them to cast such incredible powers. And of course, they were as likely to get killed by the star they were manipulating as the enemies they were targeting, as one small mistake in the ritual can result in the death of everyone involved. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.